Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox. I am really, really excited for today's video. I just got finished making the thumbnail and I was like, today's Ikea hacks is such a good video. If you guys have not been following my channel or you're brand new to my channel, whatever it might be, hello, I'm Drew. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week. So you can click that subscribe button below, turn on the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. But I have like a reoccurring video I do on my channel, which is Ikea hacks. I love shopping at Ikea, but I find I find a lot of their pieces to be very, very simple, very basic, and sometimes I want my pieces to be a little bit more elevated, a little bit more personalized and fun. Oh my gosh, I also completely forgot to mention, guys, I got my eyebrows microbladed. Can you see, can you tell, like, can you see these hair strokes? These are all fake. Sorry, I have literal spray paint on my fingers. These are all fake hair, real hair, fake hair. My eyebrows before, I'm gonna put in like the TikTok video right here that I filmed of the process. You can follow me on TikTok at Lone Fox Home. Sorry for jumping off like track really quickly, but if you were curious why my eyebrows maybe look different, are more arched, are more just like filled in slash look dark, that's because they're in the healing process right now, but I am obsessed with them. Like I have filled in my eyebrows every day of my life since high school because I have, I had such bad eyebrows before. I'll insert a before and after as well so you guys can take a look at it. But I cannot believe that I can now wake up and just like have a good eyebrow like that is crazy to me okay enough rambling I just wanted to let you guys know in case you were curious let's get into today's video I wanted to kick this video off with a bang. So we are starting with a larger scale project. I'm using two of these Ikbe Valter little wall mounts and also this Torslev, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, rug. And the other supplies I'm gonna be using are a hot glue gun, wooden dowel, black spray paint, and some painter's tape. So I'm taking this rug, and I believe this is a three foot by five foot rug, and I'm going to be taking the top portion and I'm actually going to be folding it over on itself and then caught gluing down just the edge. We're basically creating like a little pocket hole. That way we can stick the wood and dowel through. So just use a strong bond glue, hot glue worked great. And then I'm using some paper towel and painter's tape to create a diagonal stripe across to this rug. And this is gonna be on the bottom section of the rug. Basically I am masking off the top portion and we're going to be spraying this with some black spray paint. I actually had to reposition it one time uh, just to get it in the correct position that I wanted it in. And then once you have that, I brought it outside and I used this two times Rust-Oleum black spray paint that I used in my thrift flip video. And I'm just gonna be spraying the entire bottom portion of this rug. Now, since this is going to be a wall hanging, I don't really mind that it's going to be like crunchy and textured. Of course, you wouldn't want to probably use this on your actual floor, but um, since it's a wall hanging, I figured it would just be totally fine to spray the bottom portion of this. And the great thing is that you can totally spray this with any color you like and really have like a coordinating wall tapestry. And I absolutely love the way that this looks when it is hung up. So I gave it a good coating. I had to go over it multiple times just because it was kind of splotchy. And then this this is the cleanest reveal ever. I was worried, but look at this. Okay. Uh, so that is what the bottom half of the rug looks like. And all you have to do to finish this off is just slip the dowel through the top portion and then you're gonna uh, mount the two wall brackets. And I just love how this is hung as opposed to a traditional tapestry. And this ended up costing about $36. I think it's great because it's pretty large scale. I told you guys that this video is filled with a ton of projects I love, and this one is probably one of my favorite decor items I've actually created. So just go back if you wanna look at those supplies because we're gonna jump right in. I'm starting off with these Lindrande objects, which I've used these before on my channel, and they are just like round circular decor pieces, and I'm also using some air dry clay. And what I'm gonna be doing with this clay is basically just molding it around the actual hoop portion of this like decorative object, and I'm gonna be creating it into sort of a new, more organic kind of steel looking object, a very CB2 restoration hardware vibe. I absolutely love pieces like this, but they typically cost anywhere from like 50 to $150 for just like one decorative object, but they're actually made of real metal. Of course, we're not doing that today. So I'm using a little bit of water and I'm just rubbing what I've already done. This literally looks sexual. I'm very sorry about that, but you know, you just got to do what you got to do. So I'm taking the water and just smoothing out the uh, clay because basically we're just wanting to break down like the top 
top layer of clay and make it just very, very smooth and clean. And you can really kind of like mold it and mend it to the shape you want. And I'm actually repeating the process on the larger one. Now, these circles at Ikea were actually on sale when I got them. I don't know why. I don't know if they're going out of stock. So definitely check your Ikea. The larger one, I made a little bit more organic with thicker clay sections. And the right side, as you can see, that's smoothed and the left side is not. So that's kind of like showing you why I like to smooth them out. And then once they are dry, I went in with some of this obsidian stone texture spray paint and gave it a quick little spray just to give it a little bit more texture than it already had. And I sprayed the base as well because I knew I wanted to lastly go in and give a full coat of this matte farmhouse black spray paint to match my decor in my home. And I gave a two coats of this total and it just turned out absolutely incredible. I really, really love the outcome of this. And I was able to create both of these for $27. You know I had to create a super affordable project as well. So these are the overall, I think they're pot holders made of cork, and I'm also gonna be using some assorted paints, macrame rope, and scissors. So the supplies are super minimal. And these are the three items that you get. And I was like, these are re really great shapes to actually create a wall hanging with. So I grabbed a couple of paints in like a peach color, a more pinky peach color, and then a tan color. And I'm gonna be basically painting all three of these circles. So I'm doing two full coats. And when I tell you guys, this was so satisfying to paint something about how smooth this cork was and how it like soaked in the paint was just so nice. I loved it. So I ended up painting the medium sized one like a tan color. The largest one was more of a darker like salmon-y pink. And then the smallest one here is like a more lighter kind of like corally salmon-y pink. I wanted to do three shades that were very similar, but still different at the same time, which you're gonna be able to see in the end clips. So I ended up doing a total of two coats on all three of these objects. And of course you could not forget about the back. So I went in and just gave just one quick coat to the back side since it wasn't gonna be shown anyways. I just wanted to make sure that it looked decent, of course, from all angles. And these are my three tones. So next what I'm doing is grabbing some macrame cord. I will link this below for you guys. And I'm cutting out two just random, probably like foot long sections. And I'm gonna be looping it around and then pulling through my strands through the largest loop. And then I'm gonna also be doing the same thing on the uh, medium sized loop. So we're gonna have both of these like this. And then the smallest loop is actually gonna be the center point. So I'm pulling both of the rope sections down through and you're gonna see exactly what I'm doing to connect these. I wanted a very clean finish. So I'm flipping it over. I'm putting hot glue on the backside and basically just gluing these down to the actual backside of the smallest loop and repeating the same process on the other side. That way when you flip it over, there's no knots or anything, but it's gonna look super, super smooth. And then it's also gonna be level at the same time. So this basically finishes it off, but of course I needed to add a little loop to the top portion. So I'm adding on some macrame cord and a loop, tying a knot at the top, cutting off the excess strands. And that finishes off this wall decor item, which I actually was able to create for just eight bucks. I always have to do like a little furniture item. So I'm starting off with two of these Dalscar wooden frames. And I'm also using what I think is a new tray to Ikea. It's like a restored wood looking tray, very West Elm, but for only $25. And the additional supplies are these L brackets and little miniature screws. And I'm also gonna be using a drill and a pen. So these are the L brackets. They're just from Lowe's. It's a couple bucks for a pack of eight. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm opening up the frame and pulling out everything on the inside of the frame. You're not gonna need any of those pieces at all. All. And then what I'm doing is laying down my four L brackets on one of the ends of the frame. It's going to be the shorter end. And I'm going to be drilling what are known as pilot holes. I learned this from my lovely friend, Rachel, who is a woodworker here on YouTube. I don't know how to work the wood, but 
you know, I can try sometimes. So I'm using, that sounded awful, honestly. I'm using this drill bit that's really small and just basically creating starting holes for these miniature screws. Uh, it just makes it so that the wood doesn't split and it just gives the screw an easier area to kind of drive into the wood. And I'm also doing the same exact thing on the underside of the tray. This is on the right side, I believe. And I'm gonna be repeating the process on the left side as well, because we're gonna be using these picture frames as the legs to this sort of like geometric table. I think it just turned out really cool in the end and the woods looked amazing together and I used some pliers to pull out the little black pieces that are kind of like to hold in the actual picture and then once you are done you have your miniature little rustic wood side table for $39. Okay guys, so those are my Ikea hacks for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this one and I hope it gave you some insight or some tips or tricks. Next time you're shopping at Ikea, maybe you could pick up some of these items then maybe rework them a little bit, whatever you wanna do. And remember that everything's always personalizable. So like for example, like the hanging decor piece, which I have right up there, you could definitely change the colors of that, whatever you wanna do to it. You could change the wood color on the tray and like the leg. And yeah, let me know in the comment section below which one was your favorite project, which one you might wanna be trying out. And also give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy. And lastly, before jumping out, I'm just gonna plug my merch one more time because why not? It is my video, I'm gonna plug my merch. So my merch is so, so cute. This is the visual interest tote bag. It comes in a t-shirt, there's some hoodies, there's some fun stuff, link below. You can check it out if you would like to. Get it before Christmas time and I will catch you all in my next video. Have an amazing rest of your day. Bye guys. <laughs>